Hello Church, my name is Alex. Today we continue in our 7 Churches series with Jesus' fourth letter to the Church of Thyatira. The Church of Thyatira was part of the circuit of 7 churches Jesus wrote to in the Book of Revelations, all of which are ancient Greek cities in Asia Minor and are located to the far west region of what is today modern-day Turkey. The Church of Thyatira itself was a wealthy city, bustling with the commerce of potters, Tanners, weavers, robe makers, and dyers, sort of a garment and clothing hub of the Greek Empire. The city was particularly well known for its manufacture and trade of purple garments. And if we recall from the book of Acts in chapter 16, this is where Apostle Paul encountered Lydia, the seller of purple garments. As with the format of the seven letters, this fourth letter to the Church of Thyatira can also be broken to its usual three sections. The first section is a commendation where Jesus acknowledges and affirms the church for the good work it is doing. The second section, the crux of the letter, is where Jesus criticizes and rebukes the church for its disobedience, its failures, and its sin. And finally, the third and last section is where Jesus offers redemption and calls for the church to repent and return to holiness. Now, notwithstanding Thyatira was the smallest of the seven cities, and correspondingly then, the Church of Thyatira is the smallest of the seven churches, Jesus nonetheless paid the most attention to this church. And as a result, this fourth letter to the Church of Thyatira is his longest of the seven letters and his harshest letter yet. In the previous sermon, we heard Santi discussing Jesus' third letter to the Church of Pergamon. Whilst in that third letter, Jesus had warned the church not to fall into sin, this fourth letter to the Church of Thyatira is drastically different as the Church of Thyatira was not on the verge of falling into sin but was already deep into sin. Hence, in this fourth letter, Jesus is really rebuking the church very harshly, instructing for them to repent. And the reason Jesus was being so harsh was because they, the Church of Thyatira, had completely lost its bearings. As Christians, we are called to open our church doors and be accepting of anyone and everyone. We are called to love sinners, but not to love their sin. That much is trite. And yet, this is where the Church of Thyatira had gone astray. In its posture of lovingness, it was too loving, if you can excuse that term, and in the effort of fitting in and being accommodative to the community around it, the church not only tolerated sinners, but eventually also tolerated their sins. Hence, the Church of Thyatira is oftentimes referred to as the tolerant church. And being tolerant here is not in a good way. See, the Church of Thyatira is said to be tolerant to the prophetess Jezebel and her sinful ways. The keyword here is tolerant. Let us consider what this truly means. Now, the theologian D.A. Carson, he wrote a book entitled The Intolerance of Tolerance. And in that book, he says that there has been a subtle shift in how we define tolerance. In the old days, tolerance meant that accepting someone may have a different view from us and we, whilst we may not accept that different view, that's okay. Because being tolerant simply meant that we accept that such a different view exists i.e. we can all agree to disagree. But today, however, being tolerant goes one step further to mean that not only we accept that a different view exists, but we also need to accept and agree with those views and regard them to be as true as our views. Now, that may sound trivial, but it has a monumental impact in how we ought to run a church, especially when it comes to how the church recognizes and deals with sin. The definition of sin is not relative. It is absolute. Sin is sin. It is not for us to decide what is and what isn't sin. That's for God to decide. We as humans, we do not have the autonomy to make these moral judgments. And yet, this is the error we've been making since the beginning of time, since the book of Genesis even. Remember Adam and Eve's first sin? They were tricked by the serpent to eat from the tree of knowledge so that they could be like God, knowing good and evil. That doesn't work, my friends. We, like the Church of Thyatira, were never meant to define for ourselves what good and evil was, not what sin and what is not sin. That's for God to do. 
So putting it into context, the Church of Thyatira here is trying to be tolerant, is trying to be too tolerant and had accepted the prophetess Jezebel and had gone too far and had started to accept and tolerate Jezebel's sins. Because Jezebel did not find her own practices of sexual immorality and idolism as sinful, so in order to become tolerant, the church eventually accepted that her practices were also not sinful. And although God's definition of sin to the church of Thyatira was clear, i.e. God had been made it very clear that what Jezebel was doing was indeed sinful, the church of Thyatira nonetheless took a relative stand to sin and eventually compromised, saying, you know, it's not that bad, we are a loving church, we have to be a tolerant congregation, we can accept Jezebel, we can accept some of the sinful things, we can compromise. That, my church, is wrong, wrong, wrong. My friends, this is where the church of Thyatira went so wrong. The practices of the prophetess Jezebel that she brought into the city of Thyatira is sinful, regardless of how commonplace it may be. There are no two ways about it. And as we said before, God's definition of sin is absolute. It's never relative. So here's the big idea. Relativism and sin, they do not mix. To be sure, relativism may have its place. For example, in how we understand and appreciate abstract art. Two different persons can be reviewing the same piece of art and derive from it different meanings and encouragement from it. Uh, and both are right and neither are wrong. But when it comes to defining sin, relativism cannot and does not apply. What God had decided is sin is not up for debate and is not up for different views. There is no room to tolerate a different assessment of what is sin because the definition of sin is not relative. The error then that the Church of Thyatira made was to apply relativism in how it defined sin. And in order to become a tolerant church which accepted and loved sinners but rejected their sin, the Church of Thyatira became too tolerant and accepted and embraced both the sinner and the sin. But Revelations chapter 2 verse 20 tells us that the church failed to take a firm stand on Jezebel and instead tolerated and accepted the sinful practices. And as a result, the church of Thyatira gradually declined further and further into sin until it was finally consumed beyond redemption. My dear friends, if we tolerate sin in our lives, one day its destructive effects will take hold of us. And that's what happened to the church of Thyatira. There are today little to no records or memorials left of this church. And based on what is left, what historical records we found, it seems that by the turn of the second century or so, the church of Thyatira no longer existed. Jesus' final words in his letter to the church of Thyatira in Revelation 2 verse 29 clearly states, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The church of Thyatira may have heard, but they did not repent. They did not heed Jesus' warning and was ultimately consumed and destroyed. But what about you, my dear friends? If you're really honest with yourself, have you begun to tolerate sin? Would you say that you run the risk of making excuses and justifying to yourself that certain things are not sin when truly deep in your heart you know that they are? And have you, by the Church of Thyatira, compromise on Jesus' definition of sin in some areas of your life. Church, if Satan can get you to compromise even an inch of your life, the next inch you compromise will be easier. And as that old chestnut from Maxine goes, with every inch of your life you give the devil, he is one step closer to becoming the rule of your life. Church, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, speak to us father and reveal to us areas in our lives which we may have compromised on and have begun to tolerate sin almighty god give us your conviction your strength to be intolerant to sin help us to hold a steadfast to your truth and your truth alone and not be swayed by different views holy spirit continue to guide our walk steadfast so that we will continue to hear and heed your whisper into our lives 
that we may live our lives well as your servants here on earth, knowing good and evil only as you have commanded. Amen. <laughs>